Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're going to look at differentiating polynomials, so combining those functions that we did before in the previous video. So, um, when you differentiate an expression such as this, y equals x squared minus 6x minus 4, you differentiate each of the components separately and then add the results together, or subtract them if they have negatives in front of them. So x squared will differentiate to 2x, minus 6x will differentiate to minus 6, and the minus 4 here will differentiate to 0. Now if I can just explain quickly with a little sketch down the bottom here, the minus 4 is only going to result in the graph being lowered by 4. Oh, actually, this is an x squared graph, isn't it? So it's only going to result in the graph being lowered by 4. That's not going to have any impact in what the gradient is at any point on this graph. So the minus 4 on the end of a function does not affect the gradient, hence it disappears. Another way ex of explaining the two components that went on here, for minus 6x, treat this as a minus 6x to the power of 1, times the 1 to the front, so you'll get uh, minus 6 still, 1 times 6 is 6, and then reduce the power by 1 so it's now x to the 0. And remember that anything to the 0 is just 1, so now this is effectively just minus 6. Or effectively you can think of, if it's just a something expression like um, 7x, the differential of this is just 7. And the minus 4 here, well you could think of this as minus 4x to the power of 0. When we differentiate this, the 0 times this to the front, and we get 0. So you can think of it that way as well. Ultimately, if you've got a number on the end of an expression and it's just by itself, no x is attached to it, no nothing, it disappears when you differentiate it. Right, okay, let's have a go at this one here. So we're now going to use the differential to find gradients at certain points. Find the gradient of the curve when y equals x cubed plus x squared when x equals 2. So what we do first is we differentiate the terms separately. So dy by dx equals 3x squared from the x cubed function and 2x from the x squared function. And now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the value 2 for the value x. And what I'm going to write here is m, because now we're going to transform from working out a differential to working out the gradient at a certain point, which is generally notated with the letter m. So it's m equals 3 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2, substituting in 2 for our x values. And here we get 16. So the gradient at uh, x equals 2 is equal to 16. OK, another question here. Uh, find the gradient of the function when y equals uh, a third x to the power of a half plus 4x squared at the point 1, 13 over 3. So what we do first is we differentiate all of our functions separately. So it's going to be dy by dx equals, now it's a half times a third, which will give us a sixth, and then it's x to the power of minus 1 over 2. Reducing the power by 1 here. And then it's plus 8x on the back. Now substituting in the coordinate for x equals 1, this 13 here, 13 over 3 here, doesn't really have anything to do with it. This is the y coordinate. This is our important coordinate, the x coordinate here. So substituting in x equals 1, so now we've gone from a differential to working out the gradient here. So it's 1 over 6 times 1 to the power of minus a half. Now 1 to the power of anything is just 1, and then it's plus 8 times 1. So the answer here is 8 and a sixth. That's the gradient at this point. Right, OK, a slightly more difficult one here. Find dy by dx when y equals 1 over 4 root x. So what we'd do here is we would um, treat this as y equals a quarter times 1 over root x. So split up this um, this fraction here on the denominators by multiplying. And now we're going to convert the um, power on the x here into an indice. So it's now x to the power of minus 1 over 2. The quarter here, the quarter isn't going to get um, involved in any of the power malarkey, so just leave it as itself at the front of any expressions here. And now we differentiate, so it's now 
a quarter times minus a half, so that would be minus an eighth, and then minus 1 over 2, reduce that by 1, and you get minus 3 over 2. So x to the power of minus 3 over 2 is there. Okay, and rewriting this, we can group it back together as minus 1 over 8 root x to the power of 3. And obviously this power of 3 is only going to apply to the root x, it's not going to apply to the 8. Right, okay, let's have a go at one of these questions here where we have to split up a fraction. So finding the gradient of the curve y equals x minus 2 over x squared at the point 2, 0. Now just remember here that the 2 here is our important coordinate, that's the x coordinate. So with this question here, what we're going to do is we're going to split up the fraction into the two separate numerators and we're going to divide that by the same denominator on each fraction here. You can see here, if we were working back upwards here, you would add the two numerators together and you'd keep the denominator the same. We've just done the reverse rule of that, uh, which is splitting up a fraction with denominators on the top. And now we simplify these as, uh, as indices. So it's now x to the minus 1 minus 2x to the minus 2. And now we differentiate. So it's going to be minus x from the minus 1 to the front. Reduce the power by 1. So that's minus 1. Take away another 1 and you get minus 2. And for the second term here, it's going to be minus 2. So the whole of this minus 2 bit here times by your minus 2. So that gives me 4 in total. And then reduce the power by 1 and it's x to the minus 3. Now, substituting in x equals 2 here um, to work out the gradient for this certain point and calculating this, we get um, a quarter in total here. Okay, so it's really important that you uh, remember this little technique for how we would differentiate fractions here. You split up the numerators into separate fractions, simplify those as indices, and then differentiate as normal. Right, okay then, have a go at these four questions on your own then. Pause the video and see how you get on. Right, okay, well done for having a go at these. So question 2a from exercise 12d or e then. So find the gradient of the curve y equals 3x squared at the point 2, 12. Well, the first thing you would need to do here is dy by dx equals 6x. And then if we want to work out the gradient, we move from the differential function to m, the gradient, and we plug in the value of x equals 2. The 12 here is not going to be involved in the question. So 6 times 2 here is 12. So the gradient is 12. For this question here, find the point at which the y equals x squared minus 5x, uh, where the gradient is 0. So First of all, the first thing we'll have to do is dy by dx, and this is going to equal 2x for the x squared function, and minus 5 for the minus 5x function. And then we want to find out when this gradient equals 0. So when the gradient equals 0. So in this case here, x is going to have to be 2.5 when the gradient equals 2. Point, uh, when the gradient equals 0. Okay, here is one of these fractions ones, so remember the first thing we have to do with these fractions ones here is split up the numerator. So it's going to be 2x over x plus 3 over x. And the next thing that we need to do here now is simplify these as indices. So that 2x over x will just cancel, and it will be 3x to the minus 1. And now when we differentiate this, the number is going to disappear. And then it's going to be minus 3x to the minus 2. And then rewriting this out as a fraction, it's going to be minus 3 over x squared. So that's the differential of that function there. And for the last question here, question 4j, differentiate this function here. Well, the first thing I would do with this is I would expand the brackets. x cubed minus x squared plus 12x. And now we'll look at differentiating. 
So in this case here, differential of x cubed is 3x squared. Differential of minus x squared is minus 2x. And the differential of plus 12x is plus 12. Okay, there we are. So go to uh, exercise 12D and 12E, then have loads and loads of practice at this because it's really important for A-level maths that you know how to differentiate, especially when it comes to the upper sixth year if you're carrying on and doing the full A-level. Right, so make sure you persevere through the difficult questions from that exercise and ask your teacher for help if you need to. Thanks for watching.